What's up, everybody? Beautiful spring day out here in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I've got one heck of an e-bike to, to go over with you guys today. I've got the Delfast Top 3.0. Uh, this is it right here, and uh, if you're like me, you're probably looking at this and thinking, that looks an awful lot like a dirt bike, and it does, It's uh, and it feels like one, too. Uh, you know, it's got the pedals on here, we've got a cycling saddle, you can put it into class one or two mode to make it street legal if you do need to, you know, ride it in town or on a trail to get somewhere. But it's it's huge. It's heavy. It's uh, 154 pounds is what they told me it weighs. And I said, I'm going to take your word for it because I don't have a way to weigh something this heavy. It, it's, it is quite quite hefty, though. It only comes in one size. So if you're uh, if you're big and tall like me, six foot three, probably not going to be a good fit for you. This is way too small for me, especially when you want to talk about pedaling. And I can't really see anything in the mirrors because of my height. But it's still a heck of a good time. I've been having a blast riding it around. It's been tough to find a safe place to ride it because of how powerful it is. You can't really be taking this on you know, bike trails and stuff like that. I have been riding it on city streets here with traffic, but keep in mind, I have a motorcycle license. I have full coverage motorcycle insurance. So that is quite a bit safer for me. I'd, from what I've been able to find, you wouldn't have to register this because the nominal power for the motor there is 3000 watts. and. From what I've been told, anything under 4,000 watts doesn't have to be registered as a motorcycle. It's similar to how gas-powered scooters, if they're you know 49cc or below, they don't have to be registered. But I'm not a legal expert, so don't quote me on that. You'd want to look into that if you were going to get one of these. If you did want to get one of these, you'd be looking at a price of $6,649 USD. You can get it shipped, uh, I know they ship to North America and to Europe and I think quite a few other places as well full details on that on the written review so yeah it's it's pretty pricey but it's i mean this thing is loaded out it has got some excellent components on here the suspension is from dnm about 200 millimeters of travel here this is an inverted coil suspension 35 millimeter steel stanchions uh, the front and rear su suspension are adjustable for your know, preload and compression and rebound then really high performing stuff and it's it feels like riding on a cloud it is so smooth you know if you're riding off-road it's fantastic riding on paved streets it's oh it, it couldn't be better you get uh, i think i mentioned 3000 watt power for the motor back here this is a qs v3 hub motor 3000 watt nominal and it can get up to 14,000 watt peak which is just that's monstrous it is very powerful 182 newton meters of torque which is also just insane tons of power here and you know it's for that's great if you want to be riding it a bit more like a dirt bike a off-road private trail that kind of stuff where you can actually really let this thing go you're not going to hurt anybody and it's got quite a bit of range too they actually have a, a guinness world record for the most range for an e-bike of over 200 miles which is quite a long ways but if you want to ride it with the throttle and you know, really be going fast you're not going to be getting 200 miles out of it it's, it's going to be more like 30 40 kind of depends on how you're riding if you're stopping a lot to get take advantage of those regenerative brakes versus just coasting at high speed it's going to be a lot less though if you wanted to get that you know 200 miles range there's switches on the bottom right here so you can switch it uh like the right switch takes you from throttle over to pedal assist and if you have it in the middle they're both disabled no throttle no pedal assist i'm going to bump it back to throttle and then this one over on the left is for controlling the max speed so the way it's supposed to work is class they're like over on switch one setting there that's like a sort of like a class one for europe it won't go over 15 miles an hour with the assist and if you bump it up to the center position that should be like a class two for here in the u.s it'll get up to 20 miles per hour and then if you put it over there onto the far right position there then that will completely unlock it so you can get you know 50 miles per hour even more so to me this is it's a great fit as a dirt bike right if you wanted an electric dirt bike for riding off road you've got some private trails you, you have somewhere that you already like to ride in this could be an awesome fit and a heck of a good time but if you live in the city Maybe not so much. They do sell a ton of different accessories for it. Your bags that you can mount on there so you can carry a lot of cargo with you. They shipped a lot of accessories with it that all come by default is my understanding. You get the fender on the rear here and it's it's a pretty tiny fender. You know, it's not gonna provide a ton of coverage but it is positioned well and 
in my experience it has been working well it has been moving around a bit just from the the torque of the motor back here it's has, has kind of like jumped forward and back a bit on me so i came down here and tightened everything up you get integrated lights so that it, it would be street legal to ride in terms of the lighting right so you've got your tail light right back here that is brake activated it'll get brighter when you hit the brakes and it also has turn signals built in you've got the turn signal control up here anyone who's ridden motorcycles before this is going to be very familiar you've got your switch for your high and low beam you've got your blinkers here you flip it over to the side and then you press in the center to disable it the mirrors actually have blinkers built into them uh, right here they light up when you turn on the blinkers and you can even see a little motorcycle uh, or a little blinker indicator there that like on the corner of the mirror I'll, I'll power that on in a bit to show you you got you got a horn on the bottom this is a dedicated light switch right over here so when you flip that on it turns on the front and rear lights there's the front it's it's super bright i mean it's i don't know how many lumens this thing is it didn't have any labeling on it but you can see the one side of it's lit up now and if i hit the bright you get them both super bright it's motorcycle level headlight right there and you got your rear lights lit up you get four leds per side and then there's an inner turn signal on each one it's positioned very low down so it's not super visible but it's it's pretty solid all, all things considered it it does a good job and you know the mirrors are great to have if you're a shorter rider but since i'm so tall i can't really see anything in them they are adjustable and you can swivel them here and then the left one i could mount right out here on the light housing but it's i don't know you can't move the other one out very far and they're just they're too short for me so i have not messed with it i do want to take a couple minutes to talk about the assembly here i got it shipped to me so that i could you know, spend some time reviewing it and it was this is the most difficult bike i've ever had to assemble most of that's due to the weight it's just it's huge at you know roughly 150 pounds and i had to you know put on the the front wheel there and the handlebars and the lights and the mirrors it, it, it was a lot, you know, the, the pedals. So I don't have a bicycle stand. That might have helped, except, you know, how are you gonna put this on the stand? You know, it's not, it's not built like a bicycle. The frame is not shaped the same way. So it's difficult. I recommend two people to put it together, but if you're, you know, big and strong and really determined, then you can put it together with just one person. It's just you know, gonna take you a few hours. It did, uh, you know, once I got it all together, everything has worked great. The brakes lined up and were tuned perfectly. There's no derailleur adjust because we have a carbon belt drive over here. More on that in a bit. The lights were pretty, uh, pretty finicky to get set up just because there was the, the cable for the headlight was not visible. It, like, it wasn't protruding from the frame. So I had to take this housing off, find the right cable in there, fish that out. But I got it set up, you know, you can see where the cables are exiting. I made it look as pretty as I could, but you just have so many cables up here. There's only so much that you can do. You know, there's another cable back here for the rear light that's kind of just hanging out here. I might zip tie that up here or something just to keep it out of the way. You do have to take off the housing one way or the other to connect the battery because they disconnect that for shipping. And the battery is massive. I mean, it's a uh, 72 volt uh 48 amp hour i believe you're looking at about a 3.5 kilowatt hour battery in there i don't know how much it weighs because it's it's there's just so many cables and other stuff going on inside the frame it was going to be very difficult to remove and then put back in so it weighs a lot let's just leave it at that assembly was a bit challenging partly because the uh the manual didn't help me a whole lot they have a really nice color manual i mean it looks beautiful it's got great pictures in here we've got qr qr codes that take you to like oh here's how to do the the handlebar and the battery and the light but the well the light demo video was for a different bike and even a different light than the one that i have and i didn't really need the battery because it was already in there and you know the rest of it i just figured out i've set up so many bikes at this point that it's easy for me to figure out on my own but if you've never set one up before it's going to be pretty challenging i would recommend having a shop help you out with that talking a little bit more on the assembly i ran into a couple problems here and you know delfast support was really great about getting back to me but they always you know, support with various companies is always generally good for reviewers but i still think that was a good sign now putting on the front fender well it was a bit difficult it's uh let me get the camera under here so there, there's those three bolts right there that hold it in 
but I had to loosen this little housing right here. So they've got this twin braking system on the front here. I mean, these are fantastic brakes. It's the Tektro Ariga E-Twin, since they're a linked brake up there. This right here, this housing was mounted directly on the front of the fork there, but it, the fender wouldn't fit. It was bu butting up against this thing and I couldn't screw it in. So I had to take the screw out of this, lift it up, and then I was able to put the fender in place. The brakes still work fine. It, everything's good in that respect and the cables are held down there on the sides. It, it does still look just kind of messy, you know? I, I would like it if they could have mounted it up there a little bit higher. But, you know, that, that's a minor gripe. I did just want to point that out there. So this is your front brake here, which is that E-Twin linked brake. And then for the rear brake, this is the Tektro Ariga E-Tune. And it's basically the same brake, just one rotor in the back there instead of two dual piston calipers. These are heavy duty brakes. They, they do an awesome job stopping it. And you, you get even more stopping power on that because you have the regenerative braking. If you're going over about 10, 15 miles or so, and then you hit the brakes and it automatically kicks in regen braking, which is handled by the motor and it will recharge the battery. It has, it's uh, it's some pretty zesty regen. It will, like it, you feel like you're about to fly over the handlebars at first because you're not expecting it. And they, they mention regenerative braking on their website, but it's on the FAQ page. It doesn't say it on the bike description page. So I had no idea. First time I hit the brakes on it, I about flew off the front. So that's maybe something that could be added into the manual or the description. And you know, now you know if you do get one of these. One more note on the suspension fork up here. There's no bump stops on here, which I'm surprised to see because of the size and weight of this. I mean, I've seen bump stops on a lot of smaller e-bikes. And if you don't know what those are, you see them most commonly on motorcycles, but a bump stop would sit on the side of the fork and it's typically, you know, rubber or something soft so that when it bumps the frame, it won't damage anything, right? It's got this nice little cushion bump stop. This does not have it. And so you can see the scratches right there already starting to happen a little bit just from when I've turned it to the side. So that's, you know, that that would be a good opportunity for improvement to try to fit one of those in. Uh, it, it's gonna be kind of interesting where to place it, probably just right up right about here. So it'll bump against that, keep anything from knocking together. There's another sort of a, I guess a spacing issue here with the charger. Let me turn this to the side. So this is the charge port for the battery. And if you've got the front fender installed, it's, it, there's just, there's not a lot of room under here, right? Let me grab the charger so you can see what I mean. This is the charger. Uh, it's, it's massive. Its output is 84 volts, nine amp, which is good since you've got a, such a big battery, that way it won't take days on end to charge. But it is pretty heavy. It's about four and a half pounds. So it's gonna be difficult to carry with you in a bag, but hopefully with the range, you, you're not gonna need to worry about that. So here's the, the end of the charging cable here. It's good and sturdy and it will screw on to that charging port. So we can pop the cap off, connects in right here, and then this will push down and screw on. So it locks into place nice and secure. It's up high away from the cranks, so you don't have to worry about it getting tangled down there, but the fender is just like, it bonks right against it. So if the bike gets bumped or tipped over while it's charging, you're probably going to damage either the charger or the fender. So be careful about that. I mean, you don't have to have the front fender on there. It's good coverage down here on the bottom, so you can get it all covered with mud. Honestly, if I was keeping this, I would probably just take that fender off so I could remount that brake cable housing and not have to worry about the charger. There's that rear suspension here. This is the, it's a DNM as well back here, the RCP2S monocoil suspension, fully adjustable compression preload. Um, rebound, I mean, fantastic stuff here. It's It rides so smooth. And then here's the, the drivetrain. Gates carbon belt drivetrain. You've got a 48 tooth ring up on the front here and then a 22 tooth cog on the back. If you're pedaling this, then you can get up to right around 20 miles per hour before your cadence starts getting too fast and you're you know not able to really keep up with it. So it's, it's a really interesting choice of drivetrain here. I, I've been giving this a lot of thought over the last few days. It's, um, for a bike this big and heavy, you're not gonna be pedaling it very much. And if you do have to pedal it at low speeds, hopefully you have the pedal assist because pedaling it without that is, it's a workout. I've tried it, it's not pleasant. Uh, and you know, I thought, why put such an expensive premium belt drivetrain on here? But given the weight of the bike, if you had a derailleur set up with a standard bicycle chain, 
you'd probably break it. This thing's so heavy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just not gonna be a good fit, right? So this is stronger, more durable. I mean, these carbon belts are crazy tough. So uh, yeah, I get it. Uh, but it does definitely add some price and I have not used pedaling on it very much at all. It's way more fun to ride on the throttle and if you have to ride around town and pedal a lot, you probably want a different bike. But if you need to pedal it, you can. It's got full size 170 millimeter cranks on there. You can see the cadence sensor inside right there. That inner ring is the sealed cadence sensor. It's it's an interesting, it's a big ring and those are typically unsealed, but it does have plastic around it. So the magnets are sealed inside. The cadence sensor for pedal assist, how should I say this? There's, there's a very high response time. So when you start pedaling, you can get four or five revolutions around on the cranks before the motor kicks in. And then when you stop pedaling, it'll be you know maybe even two or three seconds before the motor cuts out. So it is not tuned very aggressive compared to most electric bikes does that matter here no <laughs> it's you know it to me the 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 human powered drivetrain is more i don't know maybe just so they can say hey technically it is an e-bike and you also know, it's nice when you have an electric bike because if if you were riding this like a dirt bike and you ran out of battery and you just need to get home you can use it and you know maybe you live uh, in city like this and the place you want to go riding is you know a little ways out of town and you have to ride through town on the bike path to get there so you can put it into class two mode pedal your way out there and then once you get to the trail you've saved most of your battery so you can you know really hit it and have fun so it's i can see this being a really great fit just kind of depending on your use case and where you're gonna want to ride you've got a Fairly standard saddle here, Celle Royale gel. This is the freeway saddle. It's comfy. I like it. You can't get the seat up very high or very low. Um, and you know, some of that's just me complaining because I'm tall, so it doesn't fit me very well. But if you want to lower the saddle, you run into a different problem. Let me loosen this up. Um, one, one thing I'm not a fan of while we're here is that the light is mounted right here on the clamp for the seat post. So whenever you adjust the seat post, this kind of gets thrown out of alignment. You gotta get it back. And then if you lower the seat post too low, it bumps right into your rear frame suspension there, which obviously is not good. You don't want to be damaging that. So you got, would wanna pull it back up there a little bit. So you can't lower it all the way down. You know, if you're really short that, uh, that could potentially be a bit of a bummer. So here we get this lifted back up here. Now one nice thing here is that if you did get some kind of registration for this, this is basically a, like a license plate holder here, so you could you know, stick that right on the back there. Let's talk a little bit more about the electronics and display up here. I will, uh, I couldn't figure out how to adjust the brightness on the display. You can, if you turn the lights on and off, then it will, you know, it'll kind of brighten or when you turn the lights on, it dims it a little bit, and then when you turn them off, it brightens a little bit, but it's just not very bright. But there's, there doesn't seem to be any settings that you can get into on the display. I tried a bunch of stuff to get into it, and you know they have the switches on the bottom of the bike for changing your you know your top speed and throttle versus pedal assist. So I think they decided to go that way, a bit more manual. And then you know for controlling your lights, this is kind of your master light switch, and you can turn the lights on regardless of whether the bike itself is powered on. And then once the lights are on, you can turn on your high beam, low beam. You've got your blinkers here. Let's I'll turn on the right one, and we'll see. We can show. So there's that little uh, indicator on this side of the mirror, and then. You know, on the outside, of course, they, they light up right there. So good to have those turn signals. You press in on this center button here to disable them. Uh, you've got the horn. It's uh, it's loud. And speaking of loud, this thing has an alarm system built into it. It's uh, when you turn the bike off, the alarm system activates and it's motion triggered. So you turn it off, you hear this really loud, sort of a, a beep from the alarm system. And then if you start moving the bike around, it goes off and boy, it's loud. I set it off on accident in my garage because I didn't realize it turned on automatically and about blew my eardrums out before I could find the remote to turn it off. Uh, let me grab that. So you can see the remote. Uh, this is it right here. So you can arm it or disarm the alarm and then you can turn the bike on with that little lightning symbol there and then the one over on the bottom left, the little bell, that's uh, that basically will set off the alarm <laughs> you use that to find the bike uh, and you know i i thought i could turn off the sound or something with that and set it off again the the alarm is super obnoxious just all the beeping and stuff that the bike does is incredibly obnoxious i'm gonna i'm gonna show you just to, so we have it powered on right now right and so when you turn it off it's going to arm the alarm 
so you get that little chirp and if you you know if you want to turn off that then you can hit the unlock here and it's going to do it two more times it, you know you guys can't hear how loud it is since it's the camera picking it up here but it's when you're standing right next to it it's incredibly loud and then when you turn the bike on you get that again super loud beep so it's it's just a lot and if you're you know, in a public place i i rode this you know into town to ride it around rode it to a coffee shop and stuff and i love having the alarm because you can just park it and activate the alarm i don't have to really worry about locking it up since it's so heavy but it's just it's just so loud and obnoxious people are sitting outside at tables and keep looking over like what the heck is that loud beeping noise so I would like to be able to turn off the sound for, you know, when you power on and power off the bike so that it doesn't make any chime and, you know, leave the sound on for the alarm, obviously, but that, that is a kind of a minor gripe. And, you know, most people I think probably won't care too much about it. Now that we're back in the darkness of the garage, here's a good look at that display here. So you've got your, your speedometer going around the outside there and it will actually, it'll show you what speed can be used for the regenerative brakes. The first part of the bar is blue, and then it'll switch over to pink once you get, once you're going fast enough that you can then get some regen back. There's the assist level on the right. You change that by just using the plus and minus over here. You can go all the way down to zero completely off, you know, all the way up to five. And then there's your battery readout right up there. So it's a pretty accurate infographic. It you know, slowly goes down and it'll go back up as you regen. So it can be a little bit hard to gauge just how much range you have left. But if you've got it down in you know, pedal assist mode, class two-ish speeds, then you can, you can get a long ways on it. There's your trip and odometer right there. And so you can press the M button over on the control pad there. And that'll change your, oh, that changes the top one. Sorry, so press M for your speed stuff. So now we're on average speed, and then you can go over to maximum speed, 47.1 miles per hour, and then real time speed. So if you press the power button on the top, that'll change your trip and odometer right down there. So you can see there's the odometer, 26 miles on it. There's the time that it's been powered on here. Uh, there's your, I think that's the trip timer, uh, yeah, for the ride home, 6.2 miles today, and then, you know, back out to the odometer. And then there's your motor power right there, it'll show how many watts the motor's putting out, and you got a clock right down there. And you know, as I mentioned, I don't, I'm not sure how to get into the settings on here. I'm going to ask Delfast if I can get into those settings and configure anything. And I'll you know update this and put some instructions back in the written review. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a little bit of writing um, just on the city streets here first. I want to demo the pedal assist and what the pedaling experience is like, just so you can get a feel for that. And then we're gonna ride on some trails out this way. Um, I found some trails that you know not a lot of people on them, especially at this time of day, so that we can let it out a little bit and you know, see what it can do, ride it how it's meant to be a little bit more dirt bike style. All right. Uh, it is powered on. <laughs> it's, I, can't, I can't even see the display because uh, I've got polarized sunglasses on. If I take them off, I can, I can see it well enough during the day, but in this direct sunlight, a little bit more brightness would, uh, would go a long ways. So I've got it in level or like mode two, which is class two basically for riding in the US. So I've got in pedal assist mode, I should be able to get up to 20 miles per hour. I've got it all the way up in pedal assist level five. So we'll get the most out of it. And so starting out, <laughs> it is, uh, it's pretty difficult to get started because it's, uh, it's heavy, especially with one hand, but we'll, uh, so there's one, two, three cycles around. There we go. So you, you gotta you gotta do a few cycles to like get it going, but once you get moving, it's it's pretty comfy pedaling experience. You, you don't feel the weight of the bike much at all, and you know we're getting on up to uh, about 15 miles an hour right now. So I've got a pretty pretty brisk pedal cadence going. So you'd, you'd be able to, you know, when you have it in class two mode like this, you'd be able to maintain 15 to 20 miles per hour pretty easy. You wouldn't have to, you know, be doing a whole lot of work and it'd be great for getting, you know, through town to the place you want to ride. Or, you know, if you're using it for a little bit of commuting here and there between having fun with it on the weekends. Here you can hear that uh, delay from the cadence sensor system here.
And it's interesting, it's just that, that first time getting started that has the most noticeable delay. Let's get turned around here. Well, once you get a little bit of speed going, it'll kick in more quickly. But when we're going slow like this, you know, one, two, there we go. So yeah, once you up in speed, it's fairly responsive. So that may just be a safety thing so that when you're at those lower speeds, it's not kicking in too quickly, especially if you've got it, you know, up in a fairly high level. So it's, you know, honestly, if this was a taller bike, a bit bigger to fit my height, this would actually be you know, a pretty comfortable riding experience. And the, the belt drive system, just incredibly smooth. And all things considered, it does feel pretty comfy. I'm, just like a little bit of a, a forward riding position here. Feels very stable. Can no hands it without a problem. So presumably when they set the like the world record for range on this, getting over 200 miles, they you know probably had it down in class one or two mode like this. But yeah, you could get a long ways on this if you needed to. I wanna see if I can get uh, you have to be get going fast enough to kick in the, the regenerative braking. So I'm gonna pedal on up here. We're up at about, uh, you know, 16, 17, let's see. Yeah, I felt it a little bit. When you're, when you're at lower speeds, it just feels like regular brakes. And if you get up, you know, definitely once you get up over 20 or so, as soon as you squeeze those levers, it's it really kicks in. One downside to having the switches for speed and pedal assist and everything on the bottom under here is that if you want to if you want to switch that stuff you have to stop and you kind of you know get off the bike to do it you could feel back there you know just from muscle memory and knowing where they are at some point but not not a super convenient location for it but it's all right so what i'm doing now is i switched it so we're, we're no longer in pedal assist mode we're now in throttle mode so we're gonna you know, hit up this little trail here and I do still have it in level five for the assist level so that uh, whether you're in pedal assist or throttle you can change that from one to five to just control how much you're getting from the motor so we are still in class two which limits us to 20 miles per hour and as you can see it's reasonably zippy on the throttle here in class two mode it does seem to top out right around 15 miles or so 15 miles per hour. It says it's supposed to be able to get up to 20, but uh, that has not been my experience. You know, it might just depend on, on your riding conditions, but uh, you know, on this, this dirt trail, it feels incredibly smooth. Suspension does just such an awesome job. Even, you know, going off the trail, <laughs> going over all kinds of bumps, no problem. I have to put on my chest mount and come back through here. That uh, the 182 newton meters of torque is such a treat. This thing can handle any hill you throw at it. You're not even gonna have to pedal to help up if you don't want to. So I am going to uh, switch it over to, in, to my chest mount now, and we're gonna unlock it here. We're on a, uh, it's like a, a BMX, sort of a dirt bike track right back here. And uh, I see, it's like one person out there on a mountain bike, but not a whole lot of people out here. Usually during the day, during school, it's fairly empty. So I figured it'd be a good chance to get a little riding in. So we can just show you what it can do top speed wise. So we flip, uh, choo -choo -choo. So we have it on throttle, and then we're gonna flip it over to two on the left switch, which will unlock the speed fully. I'm gonna switch over to the chest mount and see you on the other side. So I've got it to fully unlocked. We have it all the way up there in level five, and it is on throttle mode instead of pedal assist. So yeah, I mean, as soon as, soon as we hit the throttle, it just takes off. We can avoid at least some of the mud here. Uh, 
So yeah, this is, I mean, this is the kind of place that this feels more, uh, more at home, right? A little more dirt bike, mountain bike kind of thing. I gotta adjust my seat here because it's a little bit loose. We'll go back up this hill just on the throttle here. So you can see what I mean with the power of this thing. I mean, it just, it just goes. <laughs> Feels great, so stable. It's nice to have the weight at times just because it does feel a lot more stable on some of these, uh, you know, bumps and hills. I'm sure you guys can tell, but I don't do a lot of riding like this. So I'm a little bit out of my element here, but it is a blast, I can tell you that much. Woo! can hear uh, quite a bit of rattling coming from up front, uh, just from the fender right up there. It, it is a plastic fender, which, you know, that's kind of one of the hallmarks of plastic fenders. They do rattle quite a bit, but, you know, minor, just, just a little bit of noise. Gonna do a little loop on the road here, uh, just to kind of demo the, the speed potential for you. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep it to a minimum, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a try. We hit 47 miles per hour there. So <laughs> plenty of speed. We'll do a, a cold start here again, just to show the acceleration. Of course, like any electric vehicle, full battery, you're gonna get a lot better acceleration and we're basically at full here, aside from the little bit of riding we've been doing around here. So it's, uh, you know, for a hub motor, I'm amazed with the acceleration. Hub motors don't have the, you know, you don't get any kind of a mechanical advantage or anything, so they're not as good as, say, like a mid-drive motor, but this one's still, it's just got so much power. And 25. Yeah, it's, it just zooms up there. The acceleration does pick up as you get faster too, which is again, it's typical for hub motors. Off the off the bat, acceleration is going to be a bit lower, and then once you once you get a little bit of speed going, they peak really high. So you you know once you're up around 20 miles per hour or so, if you hit the throttle, you can get a real nice mid speed kick, really take off. Go back on that same trail, but this time throttle, so we can and chest mount, have a little bit more fun with it. Suspension just does such a great job. Uh, 
Very good traction from the tires out here too. Feels incredibly stable and smooth. Of course, curbs are no problem at all. At least jumping down, jumping up a little bit harder, just from the weight. So I'm just trying to pedal it right now uh, without any, you know, no pedal assist active. And yeah, you, this would be a terrible thing if you had to pedal at home with absolutely no battery left. So you'd want to make sure you keep an eye on that so you don't get stranded somewhere. Going to do a little bit uh, more with the pedal assist. So when I, when I first tried the pedal assist, I... I was kind of bummed with it. I, it seemed like it wasn't very powerful at all. I was only getting up to, you know, 10 miles an hour or so, even when I had it, uh, you know, in, in class two mode, which is supposed to limit it to 20 miles per hour. But then I found out uh, you just have to make sure you turn up the assist level all the way up on the display here. So I'm gonna bump that all the way up to level five. Turn around here. Uh, so you do gotta, pedal a few times around here to get it to kick in there we go so in class 2 mode and level 5 assist I found it gets to right about 15 miles per hour pretty comfortably you know we're that's where we're at right now 14 15 you can cruise here and it feels uh, feels pretty good I'm not putting very much effort into it so you could you know you could ride across town like this if you had to you know, commute or something like that. It'd be pretty easy. You could get the luggage cases back there, load them up. So it's, you know, it's not very fast, but it's it's fast enough. But if you wanted to get uh, a little bit more, a little bit more zip out of it, then what you can do is come back here. I do wish they had these switches somewhere else so you didn't have to, to get off to do this, but I'm gonna switch it up to unlocked speed. It's still in pedal assist only mode. So right now it's in level five. So if we were to start pedaling in this mode, I'm just gonna, this is, you wouldn't wanna ride it like this. It's, it's way too powerful. But if you do, you start pedaling, get a few revolutions in, and then whoa, it kicks in full throttle and you just take off. But you know, pretty soon you, you, you can't keep up with pedaling. It's, it's way too fast for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna drop that down to, uh, Let's try a two, level two on the pedal assist. That's more like it. So this is, it feels very similar to how we had before. Just enough, just enough help to maintain you know, around 15 or so. If we bump it up to, let's bump it up to three. Oh baby. Okay, three is too powerful. So assist level two is right about where it's at, but you know, to go 20 miles an hour, if you look at my knees here, I mean, I'm pumping crazy. I've got a really high cadence. So that's starting to get pretty uncomfortable for me. In terms of ride comfort, you know, the suspension is fantastic. Seating position is decent. It's right in between forward and upright. So it, you know, all things considered, it does feel pretty good as far as pedaling goes as long as you've got battery to compensate for the weight of the bike so that you're not having to put that much effort into it then yeah you could, you could ride this around like a bike in between you know having fun off-roading adventures with it nice and stable easy to no hands it which you know makes sense just from the frame and the sheer weight of it and of course you're know, having all of the lights the mirrors it brights and i mean turn signals horn all of that Definitely a plus if you are gonna be riding it around in town or in city. Great for safety, making sure that people can see you and hear you coming. All right, guys, that is, uh, that's a wrap for the Dell Fast Top 3.0. I can say with confidence that this is the most fun uh, e-bike that I've ridden as well as the heaviest, that is for darn sure. Now, if you've watched our reviews before, you know the drill back at electricbikereview.com. We've got the full written review. It's got all of the specs. I measured and weighed and wrote down everything I could about the specs on the bike. And I have gotten to spend quite a bit of time with it since they shipped it to me. So if you've got questions about this bike, you know, comments on the review, you can chime in in the comments section down here. You can meet us back on our website where we've got a forum for other uh, e-bike riders to connect including a Delfast specific forum. So if you do own one of these and want to connect with other Delfast writers, that would be a great way to do that. Check the video description here for a link to that full written review. Thanks for coming along with me today, guys. Ride safe out there and I'll see you next time.